Let's welcome our pastor this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Could we give Jesus Christ a greater round of applause? Amen. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? I said, are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? We, the church, we have a right to shout and sing. Amen. God is in this place. We are expecting awesome things. And while during the worship, a song dropped in my spirit, Eagle's Wings. Brother Paul, I think you all are familiar with that song, Eagle's Wings. Let's sing that song. Hallelujah. It starts off by saying, here, here I am waiting. Here I am waiting. Come on. Abide in me, I pray. Here I am longing. Here I am longing for you. Hide me in your love. It's on the monitor. Hide me in your love. With uplifted hands. Bring me to my
let there be a shout of praise Hallelujah. let there be a high note of praise Hallelujah. we magnify you lord we glorify your name we exalt your name you alone are worthy of praise you alone are worthy, worthy of honor worthy are you, you are worthy of glory worthy. and power worthy and worship. dominion we, we magnify you, we, we glorify your name you are worthy oh god hallelujah. we exalt hallelujah. you this morning hallelujah. we glorify hallelujah. we magnify yes lord and father this morning what a privilege what an honor to stand before your people this morning and lord i pray that you will amplify your word through my voice i pray that the word will go forth with power with might with clarity i pray that you will pierce every heart mighty god we are praying for transformation and change lord we say have your way take control of every proceeding here this morning we give you free course we welcome you holy spirit we ask that you will move by your power by your grace we ask that you will touch each person in this service this morning we thank you lord that you are going to confirm your word with signs and wonders following mighty god that sick bodies will be healed demons will be driven out miracles and breakthroughs will surround us in the mighty name of jesus and we are careful always to give you the praise the honor and the glory and the church of jesus christ say amen, amen and amen and amen you may have your seats as we put our hands together for the lord god is indeed a good god we thank god that we are on this last sunday in august oh how the months are moving quickly amen and there are some interesting things that the lord has placed upon my heart I believe that the Lord is taking this church to new heights. Amen? Amen. He is taking us where we have not gone before. And back in 1924, 100 years ago, there was a professor in agricultural science at the University of Tokyo in Japan. And he had long wanted to own a purebred Japanese Akita dog. This is something that he wanted. And after looking for this puppy for a long time without any success, one of his students encouraged him to adopt a puppy that he had found in another city called Odate City. It's in the northern part of Japan. So the professor decided to buy the puppy and had to take, for the puppy to get to the professor, had to take a 20-hour journey via train. So by the time the puppy arrived, it had taken a toll, that long trip. So much so that the owner, the professor, he thought that the puppy was dead. And he had to nurse this puppy back to health over the next six months. So he named the puppy Hachi. In Japanese, that word Hachi means the number eight. And in Japan, eight is a lucky number. So that was his lucky dog. Soon enough, Hachi and the owner became best of friends. The professor loved this dog so much treated the dog as a son. The two of them were inseparable. And as Hachi grew older, he started to see the owner off to work on a morning at the train station. And then when the train would come in, guess who would be there to greet and meet the owner as he came in? Hachi. He would be there at the train station. However, on the 21st of May, 1925, only two years after Hachi was born, as usual, he went to the train station on that fateful afternoon, waiting for his best friend to arrive. But unfortunately, the owner never arrived. 
It turned out that the professor had suffered a massive cerebral hemorrhage that same day, and he died suddenly and unexpectedly while he was at work. To that time, Hachi had been with the professor for a year and four months. Now, this is a true story. And after that tragic incident, Hachi was taken in by the former gardener of the professor's family. And he went on to live another eight years without the professor. You say, well, what is the point of the story? Interestingly enough, and without fail, that dog, Hachi, kept going to the train station every afternoon. Could you believe this? Every afternoon for the rest of his life. So for the next eight years, every afternoon, that puppy went to the train station. At the time that the train was supposed to come in. And he sat there every day for hours patiently waiting in vain for the return of his beloved owner who sadly never came back. And this true story, as I said, though painful to accept, it paints an uncompromisingly true picture of what true loyalty and dedication is all about. This speaks about being loyal to a fault where you are prepared to follow someone at great personal cost. This is exactly what we're going to see in our text this morning. Jesus had just returned to his hometown of Nazareth. He attracted the ire of the religious elites because he had healed and forgiven the sins of a paralytic. And as he passed by, it says that he saw a random tax collector sitting in the tax office. And he said to him, follow me. And to everyone's surprise, that tax collector got up, left his job, followed Jesus, and he never looked back. Let's take a look at that text now and see how this unfolded. Matthew chapter 9, verse 9. When you're founded, give me a big amen. Matthew 9, verse 9. It's also going to be on the overhead. Just the one verse. It says, As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, Follow me. So he arose and followed him. May the Lord bless the reading of his word to our hearing. This morning, the title for this message comes straight from the text. Follow me. Jesus is saying to each of us this morning, Follow me! That's the word. And I ask you the question, why would someone leave their job in an instant to follow a perfect stranger? This is what happened in the text. I suppose it's the same reason a dog would return to a train station every day for eight years looking for his absentee master. You see, when you've encountered someone who's captivated and captured your heart, Amen. there's nothing you won't do for them. Amen. You're going to follow them to the ends of the earth if that is what it takes to be in their presence. This is what it means to truly follow Christ. Amen. Now you understand why Jesus himself said, many draw near to me with their lips. But in their hearts, they are far from me. You can't claim to follow Christ on the outside and be distant from him on the inside. To truly follow Christ means to surrender your heart 
to the point where you are committed to leave all behind in, in pursuit of him. This leads me to the first point I want to make this morning on what it means to follow Christ. And it's this. To follow Christ means to unfollow the world. To follow Christ means to unfollow the world. And right now, social media is a buzz. Since Cristiano Ronaldo, how many of you know Cristiano Ronaldo? The world famous footballer. Just about three or four days ago, he launched his first official YouTube channel. Now, Ronaldo is the most followed person on social media in the world. Across all platforms, so Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you name it, all of them. He has 917 million followers. The most followed person in the history of the world. And yet, this number got a significant bump in the last couple of days. I said, just Wednesday go on, he launched his first YouTube channel. And within the first two days, his YouTube channel hit a record 30 million new subscribers inside two days. He said it's projected to cross the 100 million mark in a few more days. With this gigantic social media footprint, Ronaldo will continue to influence successive generations and followers into the foreseeable future. Now whether you are one of Ronaldo's followers or not, <laughs> I am certain that you are being influenced by someone or something. You say, how can I say that? Because whether you realize it or not, we are all following someone. In fact, you and I, we've been following others throughout our lives. Most times, unknowingly. For example, let me give you some examples. The way you brush your teeth, the way you comb your hair, the way you dress, the type of clothes you wear, the way you behave, your career choices, all of these things that you have done and continue to do is because of the influence of someone upon your life. You may have never stopped to think about that, but I'm certain if you go back, you'll realize that that is exactly what you do. And I can give you an example of this. So I talked about brushing teeth. I remember <laughs> when I was small and growing up, you know, your parents would just tell you, you know, you brush your teeth like that. But a few years afterwards, I remember when I went to the dentist, he asked the question, how do you brush your teeth? I show you my brush my teeth. He said, no, don't brush your teeth so at all. Always brush your teeth away from the gum. I don't know how many of you remember that or had that experience, but that is what the dentist told me. And since he told me that, maybe that is, I don't know, maybe 30 something years ago, that's how I brush my teeth. I always brush my teeth now away from the gum. Why? Because I'm following what I was told by the expert. And that's the point I'm bringing to us. You have been following people all your lives. Whether you are aware of it or not. And you are where you are. And who you are. Because of the people that you've been following. Everything we do and how we approach life. Is because of the people that we have been following, whether knowingly or unknowingly. You say, well, how come? Because that's human nature. That's how we've been wired. We, at some level, have an innate desire to follow someone or be led by someone. 
This comes from our God-given capacity for worship. We are always searching to follow after someone or be led by someone. And so the question for you this morning is who are you following? And where are they leading you to? In the text, Jesus gave us an invitation to follow him. As he walked past Matthew, he said, follow me. And this morning, and when Matthew heard that, what did he do? He got up and he followed him. He left everything behind. And this morning, Jesus is passing by. He says, follow me. What will be your response? To truly follow Christ, the first thing you need to do is unfollow the world. You say, well, what does that look like? Do I have to quit my job? Do I have to abandon my responsibilities in the world to follow Christ? No, and a thousand times no. Although Jesus does applaud that type of devotion. But what Jesus really meant is to ensure that your priorities in this life are in the correct order. Jesus is saying to you that he has to be first place and everything else has to come after. He makes no apologies. He demands first place or no place at all. That is what it means to follow Christ. It means that he is your number one priority. That's why in the very next chapter of Matthew, Matthew chapter 10 verse 37, listen to what it says. And you see, people didn't understand Jesus, you know. He would say many controversial things. But now you understand what he meant when he said these words. Matthew chapter 10 verse 37 to 39. He says, he who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Is it that Jesus is saying to love your father and your mother? No, because that is one of the commandments. Love your father and your mother. He's not saying to hate your father and your mother. He's saying make sure you have the correct priority. I demand first place or no place at all. You can't put your father and your mother above Jesus. We love our parents. But Jesus says, I must come first. He says, he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. He's not saying, don't love your son and daughter, you know. He is saying, I demand first place in your life. I must be first. He goes on, he says, and he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Sometimes it's going to be challenging to follow Jesus because he's carrying a cross. He says, you have to take it up. You have to put me first. It's not always easy to put Jesus first. It's not always easy to do that. But it's not impossible. He will not ask us to do something that we cannot do. He gives us the grace. He says, he who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. So what he's saying, to follow me, you have to unfollow the world. Put me first. Because I demand first place. And because I demand first place, it means that there are some things you're going to have to leave behind. There are some things you're going to have to unfollow. Unfollow is a social media term. <laughs> you know when they say unfollow somebody, means that you're no longer following them on social media. Jesus is saying that is what you had to do with some things in your life. You know why? Because there are some things in your life that are huge distractions. They are huge barriers that will prevent you from following Jesus. 
And so if you are to be a true follower of him, you're going to have to unfollow those things. And unless you don't do that, unless you do that, you're not going to be a true follower of Jesus. You'll be a fake follower. But there's a secondary way in which we follow Christ that we need to pay attention to. And it's this. To follow Christ means to follow godly leaders. To follow Christ means to follow godly leaders. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1, the Apostle Paul said to the Corinthian believers through his writing, he says, follow me. Follow me as I follow Christ. We are Christ's ambassadors in the earth. We are the, the, the hands and the feet of Christ represented in the earth. To the unbelieving community that you interact with, they're not seeing Christ, you know. You know who they're seeing? They're seeing you. And you must be able to say to them, follow me as I follow Christ. Because I am following Christ. And that's what Paul was saying to his hearers. It is biblical to follow men and women of God who are themselves following Christ. Jesus himself said, the things that I taught you committed to faithful men. Paul told Timothy, he says, watch your life, watch your doctrine that you will not just save yourself, but you will save others also, those who are following you. And one of the ways that we can follow these godly men and women is by following their words and their works, their example. That's why I am always on the lookout for messages and methods from those ministers who emulate Christ. You can always learn from someone else. We, we don't have a repository of knowledge and information. God is using many people. And you can learn by following them. That's why I'm always ready to read. I like to read. I would listen to what they have to say. I am prepared to follow anyone who is following Christ through their words and their works. The question for you this morning is who are you following? Who are you allowing to occupy the real estate in your mind? Who have you been listening to? Who have you been allowing to influence your thoughts and your thinking patterns? You may say, well, that isn't a big deal. Really? You'd be shocked to know that whoever controls the mind, controls the man or woman. Whoever controls the mind, controls the man. That's why the writer of Proverbs 23, 7 says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So your thoughts create your destiny. So whoever you allow to manipulate and shape your thoughts will ultimately shape your destiny. I want to repeat that. Whoever you allow to manipulate and shape your thoughts will shape your destiny. Amen. That's why it's important for us to ensure we are wearing the helmet of salvation. That's why it's important for us to ensure that we are using the shield of faith. Because what does the shield of faith do? Yes, it quenches the fiery darts of the enemy. Because what the enemy does, he fires darts. You know where those darts, he wants to hit, send those darts into the mind. The mind is the battlefield because he knows if I could infiltrate their thoughts, I could affect their destiny. It's a mental warfare taking place. That's why he is relentless in his pursuit to control us by trying to control our thoughts, 
trying to control our thinking patterns. That's why Jesus says, to enter the kingdom, the first thing you have to do is to repent. The Greek word there for repent is metaneo. It means to renew your mind. It means to think differently. Do not allow your thinking to be controlled by this world system. The devil is the god of the world system. And he tries to superimpose his thinking patterns. Because he knows that if he could influence your thinking, he will influence your destiny. And what is his ultimate goal? To drag you to the pit of hell. And sad to say, there are many, there are many who have been deceived by the enemy have been brainwashed. Paul says the enemy has succeeded in blinding what? The minds of the people. Satan's greatest tool is the tool of deception. And that's why we have so many denominations today. And many of them, sad to say, they climb in a ladder but the ladder is up against the wrong wall. You know what it's going to be like? You spend your whole life climbing a ladder, the ladder of religion. And then, when you get to the other side, you get to the top of the ladder, you realize, but wait now. <laughs> this ladder was on the wrong wall. And it's too late. That is what religion will do. Because religion don't save you. It is a relationship with Jesus. The one that we follow. He's the one that saves us. You know many people who have religion and are in hellfire right now? Hellfire. Religion don't save you. Being a Pentecostal don't save you. You know how much so-called Pentecostals are burning in hell right now? On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. We build on the rock of Jesus Christ. We follow Jesus Christ. We're not following our religion. We are following Christ. The enemy is going to spare no effort. In trying to take us down the fake path. The false path. That's why the Apostle Paul gives us a warning in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14 and 15. Listen to what the Apostle Paul said. He says, And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers... You didn't know that Satan has ministers? He has wolves in sheep's clothing. He has false and fake ministers parading and pretending to be genuine. Jesus says the wheat and the tears will go together. Paul says, therefore it's no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness whose end will be according to their works. Satan is going to try to trick you into following his fake proxies. Because he knows if I could infiltrate their thoughts, if I could affect them, their thinking patterns, then their downfall is all but sealed. It will just be a matter of time. Because whoever controls the mind controls the man. Who is controlling your mind? What is controlling your mind? There's a third and final way in which we follow Jesus. And it's this. To follow Christ means to follow his word. Both the spoken and the written word. To follow Christ means to follow his word. If you are not following the word, you are not following Christ. I hate to burst your bubble. It's as simple as that. 
Jesus says, if you love me, you will. What? Keep my commandments. And my commandments are not grievous. They are not burdensome. They are not impossible to follow. This is what Matthew did in the text. Jesus was passing by. Walking by. See that man say, Nong de. We brother Joseph say, Nong. And he said, follow me. And continued walking. And Matthew got up. Left the tax office. And followed Jesus. How many times does Jesus have to speak to you? Before you would obey. How much times does he have to tell you the same thing? I want to tell us something here. That Jesus' invitation to follow him isn't a suggestion. It's a command. When he says follow me. He's not giving us an option. He's giving a command. He says follow me. Because Jesus knows that the only way for you to be successful in navigating this maze that is called life is by following him. If you th take any other path, any other path, but the path that runs through Jesus Christ, you're going to end up hitting a dead end. You're going to end up going over a precipice. You know why? Because Jesus says, I don't just know the way. No. He says, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. Anyone who tries to come to the Father, but through me, you're going to miss the mark. To follow Christ, you're going to have to make a deliberate and intentional choice to follow him. Note what I said. I did not say follow a church. I did not say follow a man. I did not say follow a ministry. You're going to have to follow Christ. Sad to say there are many ministers are putting themselves in the place of Christ. Jesus says, I will have no competitors. I will not share my glory. We are following Christ. Because you're not going to end up following Christ by accident. You're not going to just stumble one day and decide. To, no, it's a deliberate choice you have to make. You have to choose. That's what Matthew did. In that moment when Jesus passed by, his whole life hung in the balance. What am I going to choose to do? Am I going to just sit down? Or am I going to arise and follow Christ? That's the choice that you have today. The Greek word that is used for the word follow in the text is the word akolutheo. Akolutheo. A-K-O-L-O-U-T-H-E-O. That word means to come after. It means to come behind. It means to pursue. Either physically or in behavior and mindset. And that's what a disciple is. A disciple is a disciplined follower of Christ. We follow Christ in everything that he did. We follow his words. We follow his works. We follow his attitude. We follow him. We pursue him. Deliberate and intentional choice making to, to follow him. It means then that we are keeping our eyes on him. You can't follow someone if you're not keeping your eyes on them. You can't be driving down the road and you're, 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 you're looking so, you're looking back, you know, and you're, you're driving. No, you have to look ahead. Paul says, focus on the prize. Focus on the upward call in God. Who is the prize? Jesus is the prize. You have to focus on him. 
And one of the primary ways that we follow him is by pursuing his word. Both the spoken and the written word. What does God say? What is he saying in his word concerning you? What did he tell you this morning when you woke up? What was the rhema word? This God that we serve is a speaking God, you know. He doesn't just speak through the written word. He speaks through the audible word, through the rhema word, a word for the moment. He speaks. The question is, are you listening? Matthew and the other disciples, they heard the voice of God. And they pursued him. They did not take him out of their sights. They pursued the word of God for their lives. What are you pursuing? What is driving you this morning? What gets your attention? What moves you? What are you passionate about? Jesus says, to be a follower of me, you need to be passionate about my word. My word is the thing that ought to be driving you. When you wake up in the morning. When you go to sleep at night. My word must be resonating in your heart, in your mind. And you see, you know what I find about following the, the, the Lord and about pursuing his word? The word transforms you. As you begin to pursue the Lord and the things of God, you are transformed by the word. You remember what Jesus said to his disciples? He says, you are clean because of the word. The word has power to change. Life is in the word. Power is in the word. Vision is in the word. Everything you need is in the word. Because he spoke and creation came into being. You see, you can't follow Jesus for long and not be transformed. You can't be in the company of Jesus and not be changed. This was the thing that they said when they looked at the disciples. They said, these are unlettered men. But we note that they had been with Jesus. And they were changed in the presence of Jesus. That's why Jesus himself said in John 10, 4 and 5. He says, my sheep follow me because they know my voice. He says, they will not follow a stranger because they don't recognize the voice of a stranger. Whose voice are you following this morning? There's something about the voice of Jesus that changes us. It produces in us both the capacity to know the master and the capacity to follow him. We need to pursue after the word of God because you will be changed. You will be transformed by the word. The word is going to give you intimate knowledge of jesus the word is going to give you the capacity to continue following jesus and as i conclude this message this morning i want to remind you that it is a privilege and not a pain to follow jesus it is a privilege and not a pain. You know how many people in hellfire now wish they were sitting where you are sitting? With another chance. With another opportunity. But it's too late. They are in pain. And I'm saying it is a privilege to follow Jesus. It's a privilege because when we follow him, we obtain the prize. He is the prize. As we follow him, we are changed from glory to glory. The more time you spend in his presence, the more you become like him. We said there are three ways that you can follow Jesus and become more like him. Firstly, 
You follow Jesus by unfollowing the world. Because Jesus says no man can serve two masters. Either you're going to hold on to one and hate the other or vice versa. Secondly, we follow Jesus by following godly leaders. Who model the message and the ministry of Jesus. Third and finally, we follow Jesus by following his word. Both the written and the spoken word. This is the acid test of true discipleship. Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. They know my voice. And because they know my voice, they follow me. You're not going to follow a stranger. And so I appeal to you this morning. Heed the voice of Jesus. You say, what is Jesus saying to me? He's saying to you, follow me. Let's bow our heads this morning. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. Lord, you are worthy of all praise. You are worthy of honor and glory this morning. We magnify, we glorify your name, Lord. Father, I thank you for this word. This word that went forth into our hearts. And Lord, you are placing the spotlight on the type and quality of disciples that we are. You are calling us to a higher level. You are calling us to keep our eyes on you. You are calling us to follow you, Lord. Lord, we understand that sometimes it's difficult to follow you. Sometimes the road gets difficult. And Lord, we know that you understand this. Lord, we know that there may be some here that are struggling in their walk. Struggling to keep their eyes on you. Struggling to pursue you, Lord. I pray, Lord, for them in a special way. That you will release strength. That you will release your grace, mighty God. That you will take them up on eagles' wings, mighty God. Lift them higher. Where the air is rare, you're going to take us up on eagles' wings, mighty God. Mighty God, I pray that you would blanket this entire community right now. With your presence. Under the weight of your Holy Spirit. Let your Holy Spirit fire fall fresh upon us, Lord. Every thought, every imagination, everything, every form of resistance to following you, we break and destroy right now. Lord, I pray that you will give us pliable hearts, hearts that run after you, Lord. Hearts that pursue you, Lord, as they dare pants the water, mighty God. Move powerfully in our midst, Lord. Let the weight of your glory descend in this place. Let your manifest glory rest upon us. In Jesus' mighty name, we give him praise. We give him honor this morning. We give him glory. Could we stand in the presence of the Lord? Come live in me all my life. Take over. Come breathe in me and I will.
Alleluia. Alleluia. We give, we give you praise, Lord. Alleluia. We magnify you, Lord. Alleluia. This is our supernatural service. You have a, a need this morning for supernatural intervention. You have been following Jesus and you feel like things are not working. You feel like you're hitting a dead end. You feel like you're hitting a roadblock. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. And in His presence, there is fullness of joy. In His presence, there is breakthroughs. So you need a breakthrough this morning. You need supernatural intervention this morning. I want to invite you to come to the front. We are going to pray and minister under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Come live in me. Oh my With uplifted hands. Take over, Lord. Take, Take over. over.
diabetes right now in the name of Jesus. I command you, spirit of diabetes, get out of this body right now. I command you to return to normal in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you will take your daughter up on eagle wings. Mighty God, into the heavenly. Give her eyes to see what you would have her to see. Give her ears to hear what you would have her hear, mighty God. God says he's bringing authority. He's bringing order and direction to your life. Mighty God, I pray that you will order her footsteps. And you will lead her into the path of righteousness. God says the path of the righteous to shine brightly. In the mighty name of Jesus, let there be light. Light, oh God. Bring clarity in the name of Jesus. I tear out that veil, that cobweb, that the enemy has placed before your eyes. We tear down in the name of Jesus. And I release sight and light into the light right now in Jesus' name. Open up these eyes, Lord. Open these eyes. Mighty God, that she will see in the realm of the spirit. Mighty God. Lord, I thank you. What you're gonna do in and through her life in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God, you are sufficient for all things. Lord, you know exactly what is needed in your daughter's life. Mighty God, mighty God, I pray that you will shift her focus. Shift her gaze. Shift her focus and shift her gaze. Mighty God, I pray that you will help her to let go. That's a prayer, Lord. To let go. Let go and let God right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Right now I use the sword of God. I use the sword of God and I cut asunder that spiritual naval string. That spiritual naval string. I cut right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for our family. Daughter, a granddaughter, a son, son in law, mighty God, minister to them. Minister to them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray your purpose, your purpose for her life. Mighty God, give her eyes to see. Give her eyes to see what you are doing here. Give her ears to hear what you are saying, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, let it be so. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you praise, Lord. We give you honor. We give you glory. You are worthy of all praise. You are worthy of praise. Lord, I thank you for all that you're doing. Sakura's life. You brought her thus far. Thus far. And God says he's not finished with you yet. He's not finished with Sakura. But God says there's one thing that is needful. One thing. One thing that is needful. That you will sit at his feet. Even as Mary sat at his feet. Lord, I pray that you cause everything to fade into the background as she begins to focus and fixate her eyes on you in the name of Jesus. One thing is needful. That's what I hear the Lord saying, Sister Thor. One thing. 
one thing is needful that you may pursue the Lord that you may become enwrapped in the Lord right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus God says all those other things all those other things things that are bothering you things that are disturbing you God says those things are low priority low value he says pursue me seek after me seek after me so right now Lord I release the grace I release strength I release favor breakthrough in the name of Jesus No weapon that is formed against you will prosper. And every tongue, every tongue that rises up in judgment, I condemn right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Those thoughts, those words, they are going to fall to the ground. No! In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I release strength. Strength. Stability. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God says, stand. Stand. And having done all to stand, continue to stand. God is going to give you the grace and the strength to stand, Sister Natalie, in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the battle. God is going to release grace and strength to you right now. So mighty God, we come into agreement with that word. We release your grace. We release your strength upon Sister Natalie in the name of Jesus. Let it be so in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, all symptoms, I command you, go in Jesus' name. I command every organ, every tissue, every nerve, every cell in your body to be made whole, to be made well. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit of infirmity. Spirit of infirmity. Spirit of infirmity. You are out of bounds. I cover Brother Mac from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet with the blood of Jesus Christ. Every spirit of infirmity, I command you, leave this body right now. You will not torment this body any longer. In Jesus' name, I terminate your assignment. I command you, Ruth, Brother Mark, now, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, it is so, it is God, in Jesus' name. every barrier everything that is blocking that is hindering the move of God in his life I drive you out in Jesus name every blockage every principality that is standing and God in the gates we release the fire of God to consume and destroy you right now in Jesus name Lord, I pray that you will activate his angels. Angels will be ascending and descending all around him. 
Breaking the answers. Bringing the answers to prayer, mighty God. So Father, I pray that you will create an open pathway. Open pathway. says, my brother, one thing that is needful, one thing, and that is to sit at the feet of Jesus. You need to reposition yourself at the feet of Jesus to pursue him, pursue his word, pursue him in prayer, pursue him throughout the day. Let your heart and your mind be stay on the Lord. Pursue Him. That's the word that God is releasing to you. You need to pursue Him. You need to set yourself apart to spend some time in the presence of the Lord. God says, supernatural things will be manifested in your life. Supernatural breakthroughs. They are on the other side of your time with the Lord. So Father, we thank you. Let this word come to pass. I release your grace and your strength upon him. Lord, to carve out that time that is needed to spend in your presence. Abide in the presence of the Lord. God says, as you begin to seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, all these things that you need will be added in Jesus' name. to you. You are on defense. God says you need to come off defense. Come off defense. Come off defense. Make a choice. Make a choice. So mighty God, I pray for your grace and your strength upon his life. Give him the courage to unfollow the world. Give him the courage to unfollow the enemy. Give him the courage and the commitment to follow you with his whole heart. With his whole heart. God says you're following, but you're following from a distance. You are beyond defense. You need to come inside. God says you need to come inside, brother. So, Father, we give you praise and we thank you. And you're going to bring order, direction, clarity, 
into his life you're going to give him the strength to pursue you Lord to pursue you in Jesus name So at this time, we're going to wait on you for the tithes and the designated offerings. Praise the Lord. Worship team. Hallelujah. 